in the last module we generated a function uh, y of x and uh, we'll call it the exp function in this module we generated this function here and we saw that it had two properties first of all if we differentiated it it returned itself it's its own derivative and the second thing we showed about it was that x of 0 is 1 and uh, this is uh, the actual function down here the red line and the blue line is the program's canned function for exp and this is showing that they are the same uh, but we don't know that yet we want to prove that and what we have to prove is the following you know, all we know at this point is that we have a function which has two properties and these are the two properties that it has up here now the exponential function has these properties down here also you know we we think of exponential exponentiation as e raised to a power and these are two properties that powers have uh, but we don't know that our function has it yet all we know about our function is that it has these two properties up here now I'm going to use this alternative uh, notation for x because if you use the e to the x or e to the a plus x it suggests things that you haven't proven yet you know so, so you tend to use your conclusion as your proof but if we use this notation down here we will uh, not be as liable to uh, assume what we want to prove all right so we have to get from up here down to there and how are we going to do that well let's take the first one let's consider uh, an auxiliary function let's define g of x to be x of a plus x divided by x of a now I'm going to just differentiate that what I'm trying to do is show that this function is in fact exp it's the exp function and to do that we have to show two things we have to show that if we differentiate it we get it back again so let's just differentiate it and remember uh, how we differentiate this thing here x of a plus x that's the chain rule with a very simple inner function the derivative of the inner function is just one since we're assuming a is a constant and this thing down here x of a is a constant so when we differentiate this thing we get the following I'm gonna let the program do it we get this okay and notice it has the x in it that's from the chain rule and we uh, have an assumption about x or the derivative of x we know that it returns itself in other words we can just get rid of this prime here that's one of the things we're assuming about our x function all right now we can then go and look at our definition of g and the definition of g is precisely what we have on the right hand side here now this here is the same as this here so let me just make that substitution and we get this equation g prime of x is equal to g of x now let's do one other thing let's just evaluate this function let's go back to g of x and let's evaluate it at x equals 0 and what's going to happen to this side over here to the right hand side when x is 0 we're going to have x of a over x of a or we're going to have just 1 so let's make that substitution so we get this thing here all right, so we've shown that this g has two properties its derivative is itself and g of 0 is 1 that means that g of x has to be x because there's only one function that has both of those properties so let's write that g of x is equal to x of x 
and now we just substitute in here our definition of g of x and you know we have that x of a here so let's just multiply both sides of the equation by that function there and we get the desired conclusion we get that x of a plus x is equal to the product of the two exps so in other words we've proven that we can write our x function using the notation that suggests we're dealing with an exponent because we've proven one of the properties that uh, you know exponents have now let's prove the other property which is this thing here you know this is this is true of exponents we don't know th that it's true of our exp yet because we don't know for sure that our exp is a, a exactly similar to taking exponents so what we have to prove then is this thing down here and to do that we're going to do it in stages so let's go back down here and we've proven that this is true and this is true for any x at all so in particular it's true for a so I can substitute a in there and a slight extension you know same idea you can prove this too I won't prove it uh, you know here but it's very simple to uh, get from our previous uh, equation to this equation all right, so that's true, and we're we're going to assume that we've proved that. And let's look at that though. If we simplify that, a a a a plus a plus a is just three a, and this side is x of a cubed. So let's simplify both sides. So we get this formula. And let's put that down there. So you know that three we could do that same thing with any integer at all we could put five a's in here and uh, then five versions of exponent over there so what we've proven then is in general that if this is an integer we can move that out of the exponentiation function and now this, remember this you know you see this thing oh well okay that's obvious but it's not obvious you know this is true only for the exponentiation function if I were to change this to any other function at all say I chose a sine here instead it's gonna not be right or cosine or anything uh, so we've actually shown something the fact that you can take an M inside the parentheses and move it out as an exponent is something new something um, that needs to be shown now let's look at uh, one more version of this let's suppose we're dealing not with uh, integer on top but let's say one third here we want to show that we can move that out and again you know that's you have to prove that that's not something obvious if you change this x to any other function it's not going to be true but we have to prove it here given what we've already proven and what we've already proven is that if we have an integer out here we can move that inside the parens so let's look at this thing what does this equality mean the left hand side is the thing that's unknown we don't really know what that is we want to express a, a property of that that uh, we're not sure of yet now the right hand side we know what property we're talking about here the cube root of x of a is the thing that if you raise it to the third power you get x of a let me say that again the definition of this side is this is a cube root of x of a so that means if you raise it to the third power whatever it is you should get the x of a so to prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side we have to show that the left hand side has that same property if we exponentiate this side to the third power do we get x of a well, let's see if that's true uh, so to exponentiate this to the third power we have to do this here 
raise it to the third power. But now we've shown in the previous proof that if we have an integer out here as an exponent, we can move it inside. So this is the same as x of 3 times 1 third times a. I can always move integers in. You know, up to this point, I don't know that I can move rational numbers or irrational numbers in. All I've proven up to this point is you can move integers inside the parentheses. But now we see that this side inside, if I just simplify it, the 3 and the 1 third collapse. So let's just simplify. So we see that raising this thing on the left to the third power does give us x of a. So that means that thing on the left must be a cube root of x of a. In other words, we can sort of reverse what we did uh, before. We can take the cube root of both sides. and. You know, we've shown that this is a true equality. Okay, and that's true for, you know, same argument for one fourth, one fifth, one sixth. So putting that together with our previous proof, as long as m and n are integers, we can move them in and out of the parentheses. All right, so we've proven our second exponential formula, or you know, our desired exponential formula for, for rational numbers, for anything of the form m over n. What about irrational numbers, like the square root of 2 or pi? The thing is, the rational numbers are said to be dense in the real numbers. Now, what that means is that given any real number at all, for instance, square root of 2, I can find a sequence of rational numbers that approach it, that have the square root of 2 as a limit. Now, exponentiation is, or, you know, this exp that we've, I don't want to use exponentiation yet uh, because uh, we haven't finished our proof yet, but this, this function we've defined, exp, is continuous. Well, how do I know that? Well, naively, I know it because I look at its graph. There are no breaks in it. Uh, and we're going to have to let that suffice for now as our proof for continuity. Uh, we'd have to give a precise definition of continuity if we wanted to do more than that right now. But uh, certainly, it seems plausible that uh, this x that we've defined as the limit uh, as dx goes to 0, it has no breaks in it. So it certainly looks continuous. And we, we know or we should know from past experience that this thing over here is a continuous function. You know, exponentiation is a continuous function. So that means uh, as m over n approaches, let's say, the square root of 2 or whatever, you know, any number b, uh, then we'll have the following true. You know, the limit on this side would be whatever that m over n is approaching, and the limit on this side would be whatever that m over n is approaching. And that's true for any b whatsoever. And let me just put a b in there just to, so that we have a, a test there. Let's say b is equal to pi. That's an irrational number. Uh, so there it is. We can move that b outside. It's inside the parens, and here we've shown it's outside the parens. So let me summarize that. Um, this may be a little subtle. What we've done is we've shown that we can numerically create a function which has these two properties. We've shown that with those two properties alone, we can prove these things about this new function that we're creating. That means we can treat it as exponentiation. It has these properties that we associate with exponentials. So uh, now we've, you know, we've got a new function, and we know what its derivative is. We know that the derivative of exp is exp. And uh, that uh, is it for this particular module.